are not that are not here can uh, have an opportunity to review this. So thank you, first of all, for everyone who is attending today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, what the takeaway will be today is you will learn the basic things that you need to do in order for you to stand out on social media. So you will learn basic, basic things for you to get started and stand out on social media. So I do want to make sure that you guys know that, uh, and that will be the takeaway. If you have any comments as I'm going through the presentation, please, please drop them in the chat bar. I am more than happy to stop and uh, answer your questions as we uh, move along. Uh, I love it when people ask questions and I'm happy to stop and uh, answer those questions for you. So let's get started. Um, we're going to talk about social media marketing and how this is personally going to grow your business or if you are a marketing person and, and you're wanting to learn how to use uh, social media to start your own social media marketing business. This is you're in the right place. So you're here and thank you for joining us. So a little bit about me. I'm Kat Ramirez, CEO and uh, founder of Advertise and Hashtag Social Buzz. Um, I help businesses stand out and grow. I've been doing this for over, oh my God, I hate saying this, 37 years. And um, I, for 27 years, I was doing this in corporate America. Uh, where I was a sales manager for ABC, NBC, CBS, Telemundo, and what have you. I worked in five major markets, worked with just about every category of business you can imagine. So my expertise in regards to knowing categories of business and how marketing, advertising, and sales work in order for you to create and convert business is right there. So you're in the right place. Okay, so this is a big question that comes up a lot and I want to make sure I address this for you. So why should somebody, why should a business advertise or market their business? Advertising and marketing to a business is just like air, food, and water for us to survive. You need air, food, and water in order for you to function, to live, to breathe, to, to keep going. A business needs advertising and marketing for the same exact reason. If that business expects to survive, they need to make sure that they tell people, their community, their target client base, who they are, what they do, and how to get a hold of you. If you're not telling people who you are, what you do, and how to get a hold of you, no one is ever going to know your business except for you. And that does not create new business. So some facts that anybody should know, whether you're a business owner, a marketer, what have you, some facts that you should know. The first one is there's over 30 million small businesses in the USA, 30 million. The second fact that you need to know is there's over 570,000 new businesses every month. Yes, you heard me right. 570,000 new businesses every single month. Okay, so some facts that you need to know in regards to that, that are relationship wise is 50% of businesses will fail within the first year. And that is a hard fact and it is documented and it's notorious. So that number has stayed pretty even over the last 10 years. 95% of businesses will fail within the first five years, okay? And I will say that the, the reason for failure, there's a lot of different reasons. So there's not like there's somebody when the business fails doing exit interview saying, hey, why, why do you think your business failed or asking them a series of questions? So there's none of that. A lot of the failure rate is a guesstimation, just so that you know. And it has to do with a lot of the challenges businesses face, you know? And one of those challenges being that small businesses feel like or don't understand the whole value or the importance of advertising and marketing their business, which is a big part of them growing their business. Okay. So let me go to the next fact. Okay. And this leads into what I was just saying. 
85% of small businesses, okay, 85% don't market their business at all. And the number one reason it came up, why small businesses said, I don't want to advertise or, they, or they're not advertising, the number one reason it came up was they said they could not afford it. So I'm here to tell you, you cannot afford not to advertise. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, okay. So I see you guys are uh, populating my chat and I appreciate that. Sorry, four minutes. All right, let's get started. Okay. So 76% of consumers Okay, and this is a true statistic. 76% of consumers said, if you market to me, if you advertise to me, I will remember to shop you. So, you know, my question is always to small business owners is, if someone is telling you that they will remember you, why wouldn't you advertise and market your business to your target audience? Because they're telling you that if you market to me, I will remember to shop you. So basically it goes down back to the fact that I said is if you're not telling your future customers over and over and over who you are, what you do, and how to get a hold of you and reminding them day after day after day, every day, then you're not opening yourself up to that opportunity when they're ready to buy. And that's basically what your consumer, your future marketer uh, client is telling you. Okay, so some some little facts that you need to know. You don't need a huge budget in order to market and advertise your business. Consistency and fit are the keys, keys to success. Consistency and fit. Those are the keys to your success. And we're going to go through those things, okay? Um, you don't want to dilute your marketing dollars and spread yourself thin in so many different places thinking you might create an impact that's not, that's counterintuitive, just so you know. Now, if you dominate one place and you know that that is the right place for you, that is the best thing to do with a limited budget, okay? So before you start marketing and advertising your business, there's a couple things you need to do to get started. And the first thing is, what is the problem you're trying to solve? So as a business owner, uh, as an entrepreneur, as a startup, you have to identify what is the business I am trying to solve. So uh, going back to this slide, so uh, an attorney, a PI attorney, a, a personal injury attorney is really good. So, you know, this is hypothetical. This is maybe for a personal injury attorney. Personal injury attorneys always market themselves and say, hey, if you've been in an accident, give me a call. So they're reminding you of the problem that they solve when they say, hey, if you've been in an accident, give me a call. Okay, so think about the problem that you're trying to solve because in theory, you're using that to leverage yourself. Okay, the other thing you need to do, the other thing you need to know and do is to understand what is your unique selling proposition? So what makes you different? And then I'm going to use another hypothetical, okay? There's a lot of plumbers, right? There's a lot of plumbers. And so, you know, the plumber might say, well, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm in this zip code or I, I don't know, maybe I have these tools or I have this special or all my people are trained like this. So think, you got to think about the landscape of the plumbing situation and understand what are the opportunities for you so that you stand out, right? Because there's a lot of plumbers. So uh, I actually had a conversation with a plumber and we were working on this. And the one thing that he kept telling me over and over was, he goes, Kat, I return calls. He, so he said, you know, if you call a plumber, you're not going to hear them from them for immediately. And you're not going to hear from them for a couple of days because they're just busy. And he said, I return calls. And I said, awesome. Then that's your unique selling proposition. So it can be as little as you say, I return calls. So keep that in mind when you think about your business and your industry, and what is your unique selling proposition? What do you have to offer that's going to set you apart from your competition? Okay, this one, you really need to know, and this is going to prevent you from wasting a lot of money. You got to know your audience. You have to know, you got to drill them down. You have to create an avatar for your audience. So 
you know, who is your audience? And again, identify them, uh, understand their demographics, their psychographics, everything about them. You know, so if let's say hypothetically, the plumber said his audience is, you know, a homeowner. So we extrapolate that he they're a homeowner. OK, let's say that his audience is in a certain zip code or region of the the his uh, city or you know county or whatever so it's very specific and let's say that homeowner let's say his products is a little expensive so they have to be middle class americans you know so they have to have a, a certain income level so the more that you can drill down who your target audience the better for you because again you're going to prevent from wasting dollars trying to target somebody who will never, ever, ever come to your business, okay? Because your target audience is never, ever going to be everyone. And anytime anybody says, oh, my audience is everyone. No, they're not. No, it's not. And you're wasting your money. And don't do it. It's a complete waste of money if your target audience is everyone. So know who your target audience is write it down and drill it down, create an avatar for your target audience so that you know exactly who they are. And by the way, you can have more than one avatar. You can have a couple of avatars. So um, just know that, you know, your target audience can be uh, two different types of avatars. Okay. Or it could be three, but just know that you want to create these avatars for who your target audiences. And by the way, the primary avatar is the one that, that feeds you. That's your bread and butter. Make sure that your primary avatar is who feeds you, not who you want it to be. It's who feeds you. Okay. So going into marketing and advertising, I guess my big thing when I talk to my clients and go into a program, a, a campaign, a strategy, anything like that. My big thing is I always ask, what are your expectations? So I'm asking you guys, be happy to put it in the chat. What is your expectation when you invest in marketing and advertising? What is your expectation? So, <laughs> excuse me, I'm asking you now today. And again, you could drop it in the chat. Don't, don't be shy. <laughs> what is your expectation when you market or advertise your business, what do you want to accomplish? What is the goal? What do you want to see happen? Because you've got to talk about this. You have to address it. You have to identify it. You absolutely have to, it's a must. Uh, okay, somebody said, uh, okay, increase traffic for my uh, services, get more customers. Okay, so I love that somebody, um, was brave enough to drop that in. And so let me address that. So increase more traffic. How much? By how much? How much traffic do you have now? Because you better know. And how much do you want to increase by? Get more customers. How many customers do you get a week, a month, a day? And how much you want to increase by? Because it's got to be realistic. When you think about your expectations, you've got to be realistic. You've got to talk about it. You got to lay it out. Okay. So know what your expectations are going into marketing and advertising, okay? Whether that's for you, your, uh, you know, boss, you know, your company, whatever it is, whatever situation you're in as you join me today. Okay, so a little bit about uh, spinning off on knowing your expectation, you got to know your numbers. So let's use hypothetically for the person that said increased traffic to my services. Okay, well, how do you identify the traffic you currently have? Google Analytics, if you have a website, look at the traffic now. What is the traffic doing? How is it performing? Is it converting? You have to analyze your numbers. Let's say that you don't have a website and you're just using a social media platform. And let's say it's Facebook. How much traffic are you getting on your Facebook page? What's happening with that traffic? Are they messaging you? Are they engaging with you? You've got to look at the numbers. Just about everything that you could possibly own has some analytics to it, whether that's your website, email marketing, social media, um, texting, uh, anything that you use, especially digital properties, they have numbers and analytics and you've got to analyze them. You have to know them and you have to analyze them. This is going to be probably the best way to know is this ROI 
return on investment working for me? Is this a great use and time of my time and energy? If you're not spending money and it's your time and energy, this is how you're going to know if the return on investment is really, really worth it. Okay, so social media, that's what we're here to talk about, right? So a couple things, it's free, okay? Absolutely, completely free. Um, but just know that free is a lot of work. So don't assume if you're doing social media now and it's like really easy and you're like, oh, this is really easy. You know, obviously you're not working it uh, hard enough to convert business. So sure, it uh, social media is out there, it's free but it takes a lot of work to convert business from social media. So just know that going into it, it is not as easy as, oh, you know, my cousin is so good at social media or, oh, I have a daughter who loves social media. Okay, that's great, but are they good at converting business? Are they good at strategizing? Okay, because social media does take a lot of work and I'm gonna walk you through all the work that you need to put into it. Okay, so why social media? Here are the stats, social media, keeps growing more and more and more. And because of COVID, social media has exploded. So that's why social media. Why wouldn't you be on social media? Everybody else is. So if people are functioning, uh, I think they spend an average of um, four hours a day. That's an average. Some people are more than that. Some people are less, but it's an average of four hours a day on social media. Why wouldn't you leverage that opportunity to capitalize on it? So that's why. Why social media? Okay, so before you start using social media, you got to have a plan, you got to have a strategy. So a couple of things you need to know and you have to have in place is a budget. Um, how, how consistent are you going to be? You need to manage your time, you need to know who again your target audience is, how you're going to measure this, you know, what is going to be your strategy, are you going to hold yourself accountable? And then, you know, of course, manage your expectations. You know, all of the things we just talked about. So you can lay this out into a strategic plan. I'm a big believer in writing things out, making sure that there's an outline, making sure you know what you're being held accountable for, or where if you hired someone, what they're being held accountable for. So create a plan. Okay, so here's the process. If you personally don't have a process in order to, uh, convert people uh, to your product, good or service, then you probably should create one. Or if you don't have a process on, you know, what do I want to do with my audience? How do I want to transition them? You need to have a process in place. So uh, this is a very simple one. You can copy it. I don't care. You can use it. I don't care. Uh, but this is a really simple one that I have put in place to share with you. And it's attract, convert, close, and delight. And all of them have a purpose in the process. Attract by a hash, uh, hashtags, keywords, content. Convert by websites, forms, chart, or cart. Close by communicate, follow-up, meeting, and delight. Thank them, customer surveys. Uh, anything that you can do to, for them to give you referrals. So have a process in place. That is key for you to start this social media strategy, okay? Um, so before I start to go into the social media uh, fun stuff that you want to know, you know, how do you do this? What, what do you what do you do, Kat? I'm going to tell I got to I got to put your mindset there first. So you have to think about social media as a big party. It is a huge party. And so I don't care if it's the Facebook party, the Instagram party, the Twitter party, the Pinterest party, whatever party, whatever party it is that you choose to create or that you're involved in, it is a big party and it's a big networking party. Um, so let's, you know, I think of my party as LinkedIn. I make a lot of use out of LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. Okay, so let's be hypothetical. Let's say that I'm at this party and I'm a real person. I go to this party and when I go to a party, put yourself in this mindset. Okay, so imagine this and, and just think with me. Okay, you go to the party and there are people in different pockets and people um, thinking, doing things different things. Uh, Andy, yes, I can go back. Give me a second. Let me finish the story and I'll go back really quick so you can write, <laughs> take those notes. Um, so think about this party, this big party. And when you go to a party, in the party, okay, in the party, Andy, we can also send you um, the presentation too. It's being recorded. In the party, 
um, people gravitate to different areas of the room, right? There might be people over here laughing and telling jokes. And if you're that kind of person and you want to laugh and, you know, you're curious, you're going to go over there, right? You're going to say, hey, what are you guys talking about? If there's somebody in another corner of the room dancing and you're the kind of dancer, you're like, I dance to every music that I listen to and you want to go and dance, right? You're going to gravitate to those people. If there are people, you know, near, uh, let's say, sampling wine, and you're like, I'm a winey, I want to go see what kind of wine they're drinking. Or let's say people are uh, clustered somewhere else, and they are very deep into thought, and they're, they're talking, and they're, it's very intense, and they're listening to someone. That's how the party works, right? People are go gravitate to the different par- pockets. Your social media is the same way. Your job is to come up with content to get captivate that audience that you want to come to you at that party. That's what social media is supposed to do. You're creating content to captivate them so that they gravitate to you and they want to hang out with you and they want to listen to you and they want to hear what you have to say. That's what social media is all about. Okay. So let me take it a little step further, because I also do LinkedIn training, by the way. So a lot of people are using LinkedIn and they're using it to sell and they go into LinkedIn and they just like throw up and do all of this spamming to people, right? They spam people. And so if LinkedIn is your party, okay, if that's your party, when you go to a networking event or to a party, Do you walk up to somebody and you say to them, hey, I'm Kat Ramirez. I own hashtag social buzz. We deliver social media five days a week and the first 30 days are free. Can I sign you up right now? No, you don't do that. You don't do that. You go up to someone and you say, hey, I'm Kat. Who are you? What do you do? You create a conversation. You start a dialogue and you start engaging with your connections. So think about your social media like that, please. Because the people that go into and start selling, 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 then you're abusing the system and you're not working it to the extent that it's supposed to be worked. So this to me is a very popular slide. This to me is a very important slide before we go any further. And for the sake of Andy, we're going to go back one step so she can take some quick notes. I would suggest you just screenshot it, Andy, so we can move forward because everybody else is ready to move on. Um, Awesome. Now, does anybody have any questions in regards to the party? Because I need you to have that frame of mind as we move forward. And I teach you the strategies and tactics as we move forward. So the one of the first things you want to do is you want to create a content calendar for yourself. You want to assign content that's going to create a cadence for each day of the week because people are creatures of habit and you want to feed into that. And if you feed into that, you're going to see that you're going to have a lot more success. So this is a hypothetical content calendar. You're welcome to screenshot it. You're welcome to use it. Doesn't matter to me. So let's say hypothetically you use Mondays for motivation. Make sure that your motivation is targeting your future customers and not targeting you. So let's say that I'm a veteran and let's say I have a veteran business and my Mondays is a veteran motivational quote. It's going to be veteran quotes so that I can connect with my audience. So please keep that in mind. Your content has to connect with your future customers. Okay. Tuesdays, let's say our tips, Wednesdays are selling your services, you sell them hard, I'm going to go into detail here later. Thursdays are a blog, video or article, if you have your own content that is preferred. If not, make sure you use very reputable content from reputable places, not from your competitors, please, please, please. I see this mistake a lot, where people or businesses don't have enough content. So they go scour, you know, the World Wide Web and they find some content and lo lo and behold, it's content from a competitor. So please don't make that mistake. Unless you're really, really friendly with your competitor, that's great. But if not, 
um, try to create your own original content. It will serve you better. It's well worth the investment. And then let's say Fridays are community. Fri I'll, I'll just give you guys a tip. Fridays usually are the worst day to post because not everybody's tuned out. They're thinking about the weekend. So if you post something happening over the weekend, you're feeding into them, which is really good. Uh, if you're posting about uh, some nonprofit, uh, Friday's a great day to do that. If you're posting about thinking the community, that Friday's a great day for that type of thing. Okay, feel good, feel good. Think about feel good or activities for the weekend. Okay. Now, what is the cadence you're going to create? Because now you have this content calendar in place. How many times should you post? And most people ask me this all the time. Well, five is preferred. Five is preferred, Monday through Friday. Five is preferred, three is the minimum that I would say for you to be effective and create some consistency, okay? So the reason why I show you this calendar and I have the little circles is, you know, if you don't, if you miss a day, it's okay. Get back on track and do it the next day. If you miss another day, that's okay. Get back on track, do it the next day. If you're not consistent in the three days that you post, that's okay. Get yourself to a, a position where you challenge yourself. And maybe it's one post a week for a month or two. Maybe it's two posts a week, then next for the next month or two. And then maybe you grow to three posts a week. And then, that, then you go to four and then you go to five. So challenge yourself till you get to a consistent level. Don't just put it out there and say, I'm going to do five, cat. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and set yourself up for disappointment be realistic and get yourself there. So nobody's going to be disappointed if you're only doing three days a week, if that's all you can manage, okay? So get yourself there, but create some consistency because consistency is what's gonna win, I promise you. And you'll start to see the growth if you're consistent. Okay, so a lot of times when I'm taking on new clients or I look at um, you know, client social media, the biggest thing that I see that uh, they fail in is being consistent with their dialogue and their messaging from each social platform. You want to create some consistency throughout all your platforms. What is the tone? What are you telling people? What is your dialogue? So if you create those consistencies, you're better able to leverage yourself and, by the way, brainwash people. Yes, I said it brainwash people because what you're doing is when you're uh, being consistent, all you're trying to do is put yourself in their mindset so that when they do think about that situation that they do need your goods uh, or services or whatever it is that you have, product goods or services, then they're going to think of you. And that's all you're wanting to do. So be consistent in your tone and what you say on all your social media. Okay, sell your service. This is probably one of the things that's abused, they do too much of, or never done. That people say, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be impulsive. I don't want to, I don't want people, I don't, I'm on social media. I don't want to sell it. Well, by God, you have to sell it. <laughs> you have to, because then you're never going to convert people on social media. You've built this big audience and what? You don't want to convert them? Are you kidding me? That's what they, they're there for. They, they're following you. They're there to uh, listen to everything you have to say. And then every once in a while, once a week, you got to sell your service. And the thing you don't want to do is throw up on them. Don't sell everything all at once in one post. Sell it little bit by little bit every week. So every week, do something differently. And I put these three examples up because I want you to see that when you do sell, put a price point. When you do sell, put a call to action. When you do sell, tell them what to do. You got to tell them what to do. You cannot. And then when you do sell, make sure you're clearly stating the problem you're solving because nobody is going to buy if you don't state the problem you're selling. So those are the things I want you to take away from a selling post. Make sure that if you sell it, you sell it hard and you do the things that I just explained to you. What is the problem you're solving? How do you fix that problem? Uh, how do they get a hold of you? Why should they get a hold of you? Okay, so you're directing them and guiding them and telling them. Okay, okay, create posts with call to action. 
call the action means you're telling them what to do. And a lot of people don't understand that you've got to have a call to action. People want to be told, what do I do next? I tell you what, whenever I have uh, sales calls with people, the question at the end always is, what happens next, Kat? Because people want to be told this, your social media is no different. So make sure you have some sort of call to action. Learn more, book a free consult, join today, shop now, free consult, um, download, you know, on and on and on. So you get it, have a call to action. You got to have that in your social media post so that people know what to do. They want that from you. <laughs> Okay, engagement. Oh my God, people just buy for engagement. They want engagement. Well, if you do want it, you better respond because I'll tell you what, you will get docked by the algorithms of the different social media if you're not engaging with your future customers on your social media. I, I'm really good at auditing uh, different social posts, especially those that have a lot of en uh, engagement. And when I see a post, I don't care if it's a paid post or a free post or organic post. When I see a post and it has no one responding to all the engagement, I just am I'm in tears because engage the AI works for you. I don't care if it's one comment, you reply. The AI works for you when you engage with your future customer. So the more that you engage and comment and respond to the comments, the better for the AI to kick in on the back end so that you will now get more posts, they get circulated. And um, funny thing is, I was just auditing some posts on one of my social um, walls, and I was seeing how the, uh, the views, the views was so high. And I was like, wow, that was organic. That is awesome. I was so excited. So I'm telling you, Social media needs the content. If you're producing good content that you get a lot of engagement, guess what social media does? It rewards you by pushing out your content. I promise you. Videos, this is a little old um, and I actually need to update the slide because this is from 2019. Um, so videos do exceptionally well on all social media platforms. And you will know that. So here's the big secret. Three seconds, you have three seconds to captivate people. Most people watch your video for the first three seconds. If you're not captivating them in the first three seconds, you're going to lose them forever. So just know, don't waste their time with a intro, some kind of cheesy intro. Don't do any of that. Just get into it. And the first three seconds should be like my intro on this presentation. I told you exactly what you're going to learn from me today. If you let people know what they're going to get out of the video in the first three seconds, you're going to hold them longer. I promise you that. So keep that in mind. There is a, a big uh, influencer in the marketing space that is predicting that within three years, all social media will be nothing but video. So if you're not doing video now, you better start doing it because the prediction is that in the next three years, if you turn on any social media, it'll just be nothing but video, okay? So don't miss out. Um, okay, repurposing content. So, you know, the, the content that you're putting out there, so whether you do blogs or videos and what have you, that content that's original is, is displaying you as an expert in your field. It's creating a resource for your client base, um, but it's also creating an opportunity for you to repurpose content. Repurposing content is going to save you a lot of time and energy and work. So if you can do videos and you can now repurpose it on YouTube, you can now repurpose it on a podcast, you can repurpose it on so many different elements, then you should be doing more content so that you can repurpose and you don't have to rely on someone else. Okay, some things that you can do to grow your audience base. So contesting is one of probably the best things that you can organically do to grow your audience. If you have a low following, if you have low engagement, contests are great for that. If you are, as this, in this situation, this is a spa and she gave away a free facial. If you like, shared, or followed her wall. So in this situation, 
and you can see on the bottom, she had 31 engagements. Uh, this was at one point in time in her contest. So you can do a contest every uh, month. You can do a contest every other week. You know, that's up to you. If you are retail, you should be doing contests. If you have a product um, like a box or, um, you know, the food subscribe to a box or something like that, you can do a contest. So utilize contests. They're very beneficial. Um, and all you're going to do is reward people for engaging. That's all you're doing. You're using that product to reward people. So make sure you take advantage of doing contests. Paid ads. Okay, so I want to tell you the difference between boosting an ad and doing an ad campaign, a paid ad campaign. So there is a big difference. When you boost an ad, hit the boost button. You know, that's the easy kind of like, hey, Facebook's telling you, hey, put five dollars here. You're going to get this much engagement. You're going to get this much reach. OK, when you hit the boost button, Facebook is using your ad and putting it in unsold inventory. What does that mean? Unsold inventory. That's inventory nobody wants. That's why it's encouraging you to hit the boost button so it can populate your ad in an unsold inventory. Yes, you can target your audience and yada, 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 but they might see the ad at 2 a.m. or whatever. When you do an ad campaign, okay, a strategic ad campaign on the back end with your business manager, that is better inventory that you're narrowing down and you're picking because you're bidding on it. Believe it or not, whether you realize it or not, you're bidding on it. Okay. So that's the big difference. If you don't have the ability to do a, an ad campaign, no worries. Boosting is, I'm not poo-pooing on it. If that's all you can do, do it do it. Just be careful how much money you spend. I've seen clients go crazy on it, like if it's some kind of slot machine, you know. So just have a budget and be very careful and judicious. And only do those selling posts, please. Only do those selling posts, okay? Okay, reviews. Social media, Facebook is a great place to get reviews. Google, Google my business page. Yelp, all of those places are great for reviews. Why do you need reviews? You need reviews because that's how people justify you. You need reviews because if you, let's say you don't have a huge following, you have a ton of reviews. Somebody's going to pick you over the other person because they have no reviews. Reviews are the ultimate strategy tool to have if you um, don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of time and energy to post, reviews will gravitate in a search. So if they search for you and then they see all those reviews, trust me, that is a big opportunity and advantage for you. So you do want as many organic reviews as you can get. That is probably the best way to cheat the SEO system, okay? Search engine optimization. Okay. Well, now we're going into LinkedIn. If LinkedIn is your baby, it's my jam, then uh, some things to point out for you to optimize your LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great for B2B, business to business. If you're targeting another business owner with the title, that's business to business. So if you're targeting business to business, you're missing out if you're not using LinkedIn. You need to optimize your profile so you use it to the machine that it was meant to be. And I will tell you, I probably get about 90% of my business through LinkedIn um, because it, I am a business to business platform. So um, some of the things I wanna point out is you see my banner, have a nice attractive banner, okay? That explains what you do, okay? So that it's very clear. It's kind of like a billboard. You also wanna make sure you have a very attractive and nice picture, profile picture. You don't want one with your dog or a picture of a cat or anything like that. Please put the respectability and you want to put yourself in there as an expert. So um, put a nice, beautiful profile. And I will tell you the statistics that a nice groom profile hands down gets more engagement and more reaction than a profile picture that is you know, really just shoddy. Okay. So make the investment, get a nice profile pic. Okay. Under my name, you see that I don't just have CEO 
uh, ab, uh, Kat Ramirez of Advertise. That, no, that's not I, my title is optimize and you want your title optimized as well. So put some thought into it and make sure that your title is optimized for your future customer, for the person that you're trying to attract. Okay. And then if you look to the far right, you'll see that your you have a profile link, you have websites, you can get up to three, maximize it, maximize the websites, put three links. If you don't have three websites, Put your Facebook page link. I don't care. Put your Calendly link. I don't care. Put something, but maximize those three links. Make sure that you that people are able to get a hold of you. I can't tell you how many profiles that I look at that people make it really, really hard for other people to get a hold of them. And that's not what you want. Okay. Wow. That was quick. I didn't even know this. Okay. So we're we're done. Okay, this is uh, we're at the end and we have 10 minutes left. Okay, so there is so much more that you can do. I promise you. Uh, as I wrap this up, I want to end with a great story that's going to have a good frame of mind for you. And I, I tell this story when I'm at uh, conferences, workshops, or I do uh, guest speaking, anything. And this is a great story. Okay, and I always tell people that if you didn't get anything out of this, I hope you get this story. And this story is really big picture, a frame of mind that I need you to have as you go out and try to do your social media or any marketing and advertising. This is really useful to you to really embrace and understand. Advertising and marketing is about reminding the people when and why to shop you over and over and over every day. You know, that's your job. You have to do that. Your job is to remind your future, your customers, who you are, what you do, and how to get a hold of you. That's your job. So McDonald's is a great story to really tell in this reference, okay? McDonald's is a multi-billion dollar well-branded machine. Multi-billion dollar well-branded machine, okay? If you go to any corner, you're driving down the road, you see those golden arches, you're like, mm, I, mm, 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 I want that Big Mac, right? So you know exactly what you want. You can feel it. You can taste it. Babies come out of the womb asking for nuggets. That's how well branded they are. Okay. So I love talking about McDonald's because it is a multi-billion dollar machine and it is well, well branded. And the thing I want to share with you today is McDonald's started off as a small mom pa shop, just like anybody else, just like me, you, anybody else. Okay. But I want to talk about McDonald's today. Okay, a well-branded, multi-billion dollar, well-branded machine, okay? McDonald's, you will never, ever, ever, never will you ever see McDonald's go dark one day, never. You're not going to not go to the website and not see McDonald's with pop-up. You're not. McDonald's knows that if they don't remind you and I every single day to buy a Big Mac, they will lose hundreds and thousands of dollars, hundreds and thousands of dollars. McDonald's doesn't want to do that. So they know that they have to be on every single day, reminding you and I to buy a Big Mac every single day. Okay. So keep that in mind because my question to you today is if McDonald's, a well branded company that's multi billion dollars, okay, if this is their strategy, why would your strategy be any different? Why would you implement a strategy of never marketing your business? Why would you implement a strategy of half-assing the things that you're going to do to remind your future customers what you do, how to get a hold of you, and remind them over and over and over why shop you? Because that's what McDonald's does, and that's how, what made them number one. So please keep that in mind, because that's big picture. That's, that's strategic thinking. And most people don't think like that. And I want you today to think like that because that's what's going to make you successful if you think like McDonald's. And then again, they're not going to be number one if they stop. They're going to be number one if they keep reminding you and I to buy a Big Mac. Okay, so marketing and advertising is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not instant gratification. You're not going to get instant gratification and you're not going to get success from doing little dabbles here and there. That doesn't happen. 
Okay, it didn't happen at McDonald's. They were consistent. Basically, you have two options to grow your business. One, you put the plan together. You do it. You yourself, you're going to do it. And you stay consistent. And you remind people every single day who you are, what you do, and how to buy you. Okay? Second, you hire someone to do it. You hire someone or you pay for someone to do some sort of marketing advertising for you every single day on a consistent matter. There is no third option. If you do nothing, you get nothing. It's like an ATM machine. If you don't put money in the bank, you're not going to be able to get money out. So if you don't put the time and energy and work into it, you're not going to get anything out of it. Nothing. There is no magical mystery way to get all kinds of success in business if you don't work at it. Okay. So people have asked me before, when do I stop advertising and marketing cat? Well, the day you want to close the doors, you go right ahead. That's when you can stop. Sure. Go for it. Let me know when you do that. I'll help you sell your business because you would, you, I would prefer you sell your business than to just stop and halt everything. Okay. So you don't stop advertising and marketing unless you're you're ready to close up. You're ready to close the doors. Okay. So when is it time to hire someone? Keep this in mind as you keep your plan in place and you start growing your business, you start doing things. Okay. When is it time to hire someone? When what you're doing right now is consuming so much of your time that you can't get your work done for your business. It's time to stop and hire someone. You've graduated, hire someone. Okay. When you feel like what you're doing is not creating any momentum or not doing anything, it's time to hire someone. Okay. There are experts out there, just like someone hires you to do something. Okay. Never wait till it's too late. Never wait till it's too late. Cause then you'll be one of the statistics and you don't want to be one of the failure statistics. Okay. So now I am at the end of my show. We got four minutes left. If anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to join me and be here with me. I do appreciate it. Certainly check out uh, any of the websites. We do have free material, free marketing stuff to support you. I do do a um, podcast every Friday, a live podcast. Uh, go to standoutandgrow.com. Uh, if you want to ever um, learn more tips and tricks on how you can stand out and grow your business, I'll put that in the chat too. Um, it, if anybody, I'm waiting for anybody to have any questions. If you do, just drop them as I uh, drop that in there. Are there any days of the week that are better to post or times? Uh, yes, don't do, if you, if you unless you have roots, retail, don't do uh, Saturday and Sunday. Numbers go down, activity goes down Saturday and Sunday. Friday, I mentioned, are bad. Uh, so use Friday as a freebie to be entertaining and fun or quirky or whatever your personality is, okay? Time of day is going to be, uh, so if I had to show you a chart on when people are active on social media, you will see noon, lunchtime is the highest, it's the peak. So it kind of goes into like a mountain. So 6 a.m. is where it starts. It peaks at around noon one, and then it goes right back down around six o'clock, six, seven o'clock, okay? So uh, unfortunately for everybody, people are on social media when they're at work, and that is the sign of the time. <laughs> it is very, very true. Uh, when is the right time for me to put up my startup small business out there on social media? Should I do it before I get my first client? Okay, that's a great question, Kate. Thanks for asking that. You want to put your social media app properties out there as soon as you can. As soon as, because all your properties will time, be time stamped. And a lot of, there's some people that are really, really smart and they'll look at your time stamp and say, oh, she just started this business last year or last month. So the sooner you can put your properties out there, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever properties you're going to choose to do, put them out there. Do you have to start posting immediately? No, start your strategy, start your game plan. Okay, but start claiming those properties now immediately. Claim those properties now immediately and then uh, start creating a, a strategy of a game plan in order how you're going to start populating those and, and how you're going to be consistent. So that's a great question. Uh, any other questions uh, before I wrap this up? Because uh, we have one minute left. And again, um, it was 
very much a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, if you have any other questions, certainly reach out to me. Uh, you can find a calendar link on any of the websites that you see on the screen. Um, I do offer free consults. Um, I do have uh, two Facebook groups that uh, we have, and you can connect to those Facebook groups through either advertise or hashtag social buzz Facebook pages. Um, I have small business, um, stand out and grow small business tips. Uh, on Facebook and then an, uh, for small business owners, of course. And then I have uh, marketing professionals for any marketing prof professionals that want to start to um, start a business in marketing and start social media services. So any of those certainly refer me. Um, definitely check uh, uh, again, like I said, my podcast out. I have a lot more podcasts of a lot more tips and um, you know, share the link. I will try to share the video with everyone after this. And that way you have it at, at your fingertips or, or you can check out my YouTube page and I'll post it there as well. Um, it's uh, Kat Ramirez YouTube page. Thank you again. And I appreciate it and hope you have a great weekend, by the way. And if you don't know, uh, I have to reveal myself for just a moment, but I am a Packer fan. So go pack go and have a great day. And until next time, you got this.